Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, July 3rd, 2018. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to an alumni of our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, we'll move on to the adoption of previous council meeting minutes. Uh, we had a meeting Monday, June 18th. Could I get a motion to adopt that set of minutes? Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I'd move that council receive the minutes of the city council meeting held Monday, June 18th, 2018, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Are there any errors or omissions, anything that we have to change or amend before we adopt those minutes? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, can I get a motion for the adoption of the agenda? Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that uh, we adopt the agenda as presented. I have no understanding that there's nothing to be else changed, so. Okay. Uh, are there any amendments to the agenda? Seeing none, uh, I just wanted to see, uh, no, okay, seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you, that motion to adopt the agenda is presented carries. Uh, and this brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. This is an opportunity that exists at every regular city council meeting where anyone in the community may come forward and address council on any community related matter. Um, you don't have to let us know ahead of time that you were planning to come and speak to council, but we always appreciate that. Uh, I don't think there was anybody that let us know ahead of time this evening. Uh, and I'll look out into the gallery and see if there's anybody that wished to address city council tonight. And I don't see anybody running to the front of the room. And so uh, I'll just say that one more time to uh, remind the community that this opportunity does exist at every regular city council meeting. Um, and uh, with that, we'll close the delegation portion of our agenda. Uh, we'll move on to public hearings and item 6.1, the land use bylaw amendment C1260-97 uh, related to discretionary use and variance authorities. I'll call this public hearing to order and we'll look to administration for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the proposed recommendation that's being brought forward this evening is part of the Canola Field to Key project, which is in alignment with the service component of Council's recently uh, established 2019-2022 strategic plan. Just as a refresher, the Canola Field to Key project includes a mapping of the land development process, um, analysis of that process using lean principles, and identifying improvements to enhance efficiencies and improve upon our service delivery. Upon review of the development component, uh, there was an opportunity identified to improve upon our processes, and as a result, the recommendation that is being brought forward this evening. So approval of the recommendation would result in an amendment to the land use bylaw C-1260, and that would see the delegation of development authority to the development officer for additional discretionary uses, and those are listed in Appendix 2 in your package. Uh, it's important to note that that is also applicable to the Rural Service Area Bylaw in relation to discretionary uses. In addition, it would see up to 100% variance authority to the Development Officer for all standards in the Land Use Bylaw, with the exception of signs, floor area ratios, and density. That currently sits at a 50% variance authority. And as well, up to a 50% variance authority to the Development Officer for any spe specified sign dimensions, and that currently sits at 10% uh, variance authority. 
just want to note that extensive consultation was completed um, in the development of this recommendation, both with internal and external parties. And of the comparator municipalities that we receive feedback from, five are in alignment with or exceed the proposed recommendation that's being brought forward. Um, administration has also consulted with uh, UDI, Home Builders Association, and the Downtown Association, all of which have historically expressed support for those type of amendments. In addition, the infrastructure and protective services area have established uh, what we're calling the complex projects team. And that team was put in place to strategically coordinate the progression of significant developments through the land development process. Uh, this team will serve as an additional resource for the development officer when dealing with applications that are complex in nature. And the team is comprised of the infrastructure and protective services director, as well as department heads from the departments that are um, affiliated with the land development process. Most recently, we've also invited Aquaterra to join us as part of that team when we have projects that are um, going through the land development process that have a significant water and sanitary sewer component. Uh, administration would retain the option to refer any development permit application to the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee when the development officer deems it appropriate. You might see that in situations uh, where there's a potential for the issue to escalate or it is more politically sensitive in nature. Um, just want to highlight that a review of the applications that were processed since 2016 do indicate a strong alignment between administration's recommendation and committee's um, decisions. In 2016, there was a 94% alignment, and in 2017, a 97% alignment. The proposed delegation of development authority to development officers would eliminate that need for the related re those related reports to committee. And you'll see on the screen um, in front of you that the current application process, which is inclusive of that component, takes approximately, takes a total of 42.09 days. The proposed application process that we're recommending this evening um, would take a total of 14 days, eliminating the committee approval component. Those changes uh, would result in a 67% reduction in the timelines, taking us from 42.09 days down to 14, a 50% reduction in staff time affiliated with the approval process, 73% reduction in costs, taking us from uh, 1,440 down to $385 per application, and would more than double our recovery ratio, taking us from 25 to 55%. So our total savings per application would be 28.09 days and $1,055. Now it's important to note that the cost is inclusive of staff time, uh, committee time, and advertising costs that's affiliated with the process, but it does not include additional costs associated with the housing of staff, um, nor does it assign any value to the wait times that are part of that process. So to implement the proposed changes that we're bringing forward this evening, an amendment to the land use bylaw C-1260 is necessary, uh, requiring the recommended three readings by council. Thanks very much, Ms. Trim. Uh, are there any questions for administration at this point? Any questions from council for administration? Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, thank you for the presentation. In, and my question is in regards to process. Um, and I appreciate your comments of um, indicating that if there's concerns with an application that it could come forward to the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee. Um, I'm, I'm a little fuzzy on, on what those parameters might be where you decide to bring it forward to the IPS. Um, there's a couple um, instances in different uh, districts that I specifically have concerns with and, and I'm wondering the parameters for a development officer to decide where, when you're gonna bring it to IPS and when you're not. Uh, Mr. Wright. Mayor Given, um, <coughs> Councillor Clayton, um, that would be looked at that um, certainly if we do receive objections because the process won't change, discretionary uses have to be notified to the neighbours or if there is something that's in that there is some sort of concern, complexity in it, then we would definitely bring that forward. So if I can have a follow-up. Sure. Um, if uh, if it, the development officer didn't see it 
an opportunity for it to come to IPS and, and chose to not award a development permit. And the process from there uh, would go to the subdivision appeal authority or tell me where that would happen and how much extra time that potentially could mean if it didn't come to IPS. Yeah, uh, Councillor Clayton, um, that would be the official process thereafter that, um, and that's set by the Municipal Government Act. So then there's an appeal process that anyone concerned, either the applicant or um, surrounding property owners, can file an appeal against the development officer's decision. So with the intent that um, administration and council have in mind with shortening the process, um, I guess my concern on a couple items and I'll, I'll identify the specific ones in a minute here, but um, my concerns are something's not, doesn't get to IPS, then there's an appeal process, which in turn could probably extend what the initial outlay of time was gonna be. So somebody appeals something, then it has to go to the committee, then it has to come back. So it's probably extended time over what we were prior to looking at these changes. Is that correct? Um. <laughs> Councillor Clayton, um, yeah, the, the process, whether it's the 14 days, um, that would be the decision that could be achieved potentially through this amendment. And then regardless, we can't control thereafter whether committee makes a decision or the development officer on the actual appeal process. So I'll ask Mayor Given, um, I have specific items within specific di districts that I would like to see some uh, changes to in this bylaw. Would you like me to identify them now, wait for a motion? What would you prefer? Well, we haven't even got into the readings no, of the bylaw so yet. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll uh, we'll think about that while we do a round of questions and see if there's any delegations. Um, and um, you can, uh, after first reading, propose amendments to second reading. Uh, that would be the point where sure. you'd want to do it. Great. And so if you have specifics, um, yeah, I think that'd be the, that'd be the appropriate time. Uh, if you made a mo somebody else makes second reading and you make a motion to amend second reading by, and we probably do them, yeah, you can have a choice whether to do them individually or all together. Were there any other questions for administration at this point? And we'll have one last opportunity uh, before we close the public hearing as well. Councillor Bressy. So are you looking for a motion then? Uh, no, uh, no, we're still uh, just a qu if there anybody had any questions of clarification for management um, after that introduction. Seeing none, then I will ask if there's anybody from the public uh, that wish to speak to these proposed changes. Uh, I'll ask uh, if there's anybody from the public that wish to come and speak to the changes uh, as proposed to bylaw C-1260-97, uh, which would essentially uh, increase the amount of uh, discretionary use and variance authority within management's uh, realm. Is there anybody that wish to come forward to make a presentation on this matter? Seeing nobody coming forward, Council, uh, one last round of opportunity for questions for management before we close the public hearing. I don't see anybody ringing in. Then I will close the public hearing. We'll move on to business arising, and I will recognize Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that we give first readings of bylaw C-126097, being an amendment to the land use bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Uh, so there's no discussion and debate on first reading. I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Bressy. Thank you. I would move that we give second reading to bylaw C-1260-97. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Uh, so open for discussion and debate on second reading. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, the couple proposed changes uh, I would like to amend the motion involve three specific areas, um, the RT, the RM, and the RH. Um, I currently believe that uh, this overall changes and amendments to the bylaw are um, have great intent and, and serve the need and the desire of administration and council. My concern is specifically with what this looks like in the future. And if all of us aren't here and all of you aren't here, how we mitigate risk of, of um, future councils and future administration. So for me, uh, it's specifically in the RT, the apartment building, the mixed use building, the multi-attached dwelling up to eight units. In the RM, it's the mixed use, and in the RH, it's the mixed use apartment. And the reason I address those items um, to be at... Uh, so, Councillor Clayton, can you just clarify, uh, just so that we make sure that we record it properly, sure. what are you proposing to change? So I'm proposing that the specific items that, I, that I've indicated will come to IPS. 
Okay, so to not make them, uh, to make the variance authority the IPS committee rather than Correct. the development officer. Yeah. Okay, and can you just make sure that you list sure. it? So, so under in RT. The RT, the apartment building, the mixed use, depart mixed use apartment, multi-attached dwelling update units, so three items in the RT. In the, R um, in the RM, the mixed use building, and in the RH, the mixed use apartment. Specifically, those uh, those items, as I've identified, um, are not because of uh, any current concerns I have as of today. What they are concerns of is if um, there seems to be a misinterpretation from administration as to what council's goals are in things as we go forward, such as the housing development uh, corporation. If there's any confusion, I have concern that these specific things are so imperative to the success of the housing corporation that if there was any opportunity to delay process on these specific items, uh, we're not then we're not being successful in what this uh, change to the bylaw was intended to do. These items uh, are really integral in the housing uh, corporation that uh, council is cu currently looking at, and I feel that the process would be shortened by keeping these at the IPS level. Um, if the development authority was with the development officer and something was denied and council didn't have an opportunity to have a discussion and it had to go to appeal through the authority, in turn you would have a longer process and I don't think that's anybody's intention. So I think that these items are better served um, coming to IPS. Thank you. Okay. So Councillor Clayton, uh, just to summarize the motion, you uh, would amend second reading to recognize that uh, in the RT district that apartment building, mixed use apartment building and multi-attached unit up to three multi-attached dwelling up to three, up to eight units, um, all be recognized as IPS committee, um, under RM that a mixed use uh, building, and under RH, again, mixed use. Okay, 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 so is everybody clear on that? Okay, so, um, and if uh, administration's okay with uh, the substance of that? Okay, so we can have discussion and debate on Councillor Clayton's uh, proposed amendment Open for discussion and debate on Councillor Clayton's proposed amendment. Councillor Friesen. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, thank you, Councillor Clayton. I like that uh, very much, but I would like to actually see residential care facility be added to what would come to IPS. Um, reason being, residential care facilities are becoming um, very innovative and could be the, the same kind of... Uh, um, you know, high density population just specifically for uh, in, in all likelihood seniors and, and uh, otherwise um, challenged individuals. But I would like to add that one because I, I just think that in, in the future we'll be seeing some different applications for residential care facilities coming through, uh, in particular through private uh, companies and uh, as such I would like them to not be delayed because they not are new and innovative and unusual I'd, I'd rather IPS uh, get a handle on them and, and put them through okay. um, so if that's if that's something that you'd like to do I'd encourage <coughs> you to do a follow-up motion uh, okay. we can't really do an amendment to an amendment okay once, once you start to go too many layers down there uh, it gets right. difficult to track um, mostly for me <laughs> yeah in that case I'll be speaking against the amendment and I will follow up with the with a subsequent, a, a subsequent one. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay. Uh, any other discussion or debate? Uh, Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, just looking for some clarity from Councillor Clayton. Um, I understand your concerns, um, uh, but is it around the types of housing that might get that might get put up uh, because of this, not just the apartment building style complexes in these different areas, or is that why you wanted to come to IPS? Uh, you're worried that we might have some NIMBYs or Councillor Clayton? Uh, no you have to get your microphone, Councillor Clayton. Specifically, Councillor Thiessen, it's um, with the goal of uh, what I think Council's intent is with the Housing Authority. I, I don't want to see any opportunities missed. It's not specifically around a type of building. It's how integral these types of buildings are to the Housing Authority. Um, and if I can add um, initial to Councillor Friesen's comment, initially I had on my notes residential care as well in the RC, and I had crossed it out because I thought I had was muddying the waters too much, so I'll, uh, I support your intent there for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clayton. Okay, thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Um, anyone else? Uh, Councillor Bressy. 
Thank you. I might have a few questions about this that I'm trying to understand, but my first question for Councillor Clayton is, I'm not familiar at all. I, I haven't looked at the land use bylaw lately to see what the restrictions and what the requirements are for these different types of buildings. But if these are so important to you, why are you suggesting discretionary use instead of permitted use? Um, I think that uh, there still needs to be some control variables on, on these types of buildings. Uh, and however, um, my biggest concern at the end of the day, if a development officer misses an opportunity and doesn't see the intent of the housing authority uh, with council's direction, that we miss an opportunity and delay process even worse because it has to go to, to an appeal. So ultimately these things are integral in going forward into this housing corporation. And so if it comes to IPS, it uh, although it's longer than what's being suggested from administration, it's still quicker than if it goes to appeal. So um, there's no uh, intent in regards to it being strictly permitted uses in all these areas. We still need to have some control variables, but I think that the it's sort of the the opportunity of Delaying process is not the intent at all. And so if it comes to IPS, it's sort of the, the quicker of, of the two slow processes between IPS and appeal. Council Russ, anything further? It, your microphone uh, yeah. went off there. Sorry, I don't have another question, but a comment on it. I'm still listening to the debate and interested what what others think, but I think I'm inclined to vote no against this. And my thinking is if, if, we're set, if council is setting up a housing development corporation, and we're giving it certain marching orders, and it's living out of those marching orders. And if subsequently administration is making decisions that get in the way with, of that priority of council, I think we've got a lot bigger problems going on than our land use bylaw. And I don't think we're going to have those issues, but I think that there is, I think our role of council is to be giving administ administration clear, clear direction about where we want to see and what we want to do, and then trust that to get lived out in the decisions they make. So I'm inclined to be voting against this, but I'm still listening. Okay, thanks, Councilor Bressy. Uh, on my queue, I see administration three. <laughs> Mr. Wright, did you have a process clarification for us? Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, yeah, just to clarify with the discussion for Council that the intent here is not for this to move up to development officer that um, we see concerns in any way about um, these uses. We certainly do support intensification um, for apartment buildings and using existing services. Um, as Ms. Trim mentioned earlier, that there's now a complex project review team. So something of that nature, if it's an apartment building, mixed use apartment building, um, between the development officers, the planning department and the complex project review team, I do not see that there'd be a straight refusal because we're looking at land use issues and we would look at something of that significance to bring forward to um, committee um, as we would have that right to do. Thanks for that uh, clarification, Mr. Wright. Uh, are there any other um, comments uh, before we go to Councillor Clayton to close? Um, sure, you can ask your question now and then we'll ask if there's other people that want to uh, get into the debate. Councillor Clayton. Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, to administration then, uh, in regards to Mr. Wright's last comments, the process that uh, when you say a review committee I see the step of going to CLT for review is removed and, and obviously committee re, uh, approval is removed. So I'm missing where that step takes place where a committee um, that you would address them in to go, where is that? May I give right. Councillor Clayton, um, that is basically set up and I believe it may be once a month that the, um, the committee or the um, team does meet. Um, that is just internal and they are sort of key departments that will look at this, um, including um, Director Galanti to, to, to see if we have any concerns and something of that size scale for um, apartment building, mixed use building um, would not just be refused by a development officer um, the way administration is now set up. So I guess that sort of brings a good point to what initially my concerns were with, with taking CLT um, out of this review, it the way the map was presented in regards to the process, it, it appears that there is no second layer of review. So that's my what sort of initially brought my concerns. And so unless I'm missing something, I think that it's important for the, that to be identified because knowing this, it sort of changes some of my thoughts in this. So it's an important step that, in my opinion, needs to be identified. See, uh, the director uh, also is in the queue, uh, Director Glante. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Council's vision uh, has been and will be clearly articulated uh, to the different layers on the organization. Uh, so I, I personally, um, um, in my meetings with the different department heads, uh, has been articulating this um, council strategic plan and anything related to the potential development of the housing corporation in the future. So your, your vision as council is, is clear for us and my commitment to, to pass this to the rest of the administration as well. In terms of the controls, uh, the development officer um, throughout the years, as you can see from the stats, uh, their decisions are in alignment 96-97% of the time with council. So it's a, it's a, it's a relatively uh, unlikely event uh, to show discrepancies. In that event, for sure, the matter will be escalated to the head of planning and development and to the complex projects team. Although the complex projects team meet uh, on a regular basis as once a month, it's our routine schedule, uh, we can call a meeting as in as need basis. Uh, so that's a, that's a different level of control as well, uh, in addition to the strong alignment uh, that the administration is showing. Okay, thank you, Director Galante. Um, Councillor Clayton, I'm, I see uh, Councillor Friesen's in the queue as well, and so I'll try to get to her. Councillor Friesen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I appreciate that. Uh, Director Galanti, that 90, was it 96, 97% alignment? How far back historically does that go? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the stats shown here is for 2016 uh, and 2017. Um, thank you. I think my, my point in questioning that was uh, under previous councils, I can appreciate that um, that those were different councils and the, the, the last one was a different council from us. And it seems to me that this is a, a fairly innovative and bold council. So I don't think that that's gonna continue to hold true, which is why, uh, you know, and, and I appreciate your, your thoughts about um, um, communicating the vision of council. Um, and I do think that's very important. Uh, as I say, this is a, a new and different council. And um, yeah, no, I'm not entirely sure what to do. Thank you, Mayor Given. Thanks, Councilor Friesen. Uh, I'll just enter the queue uh, here to say that I won't support the amendments. I appreciate the intent or the, the, the intent to speed something that's priority for Council. Um, but my sense is that uh, two, two different levels. First, we're attempting to solve a problem that we don't know exists yet, um, which might hamper our ability to solve a problem that we do know exists in terms of our process. Um, so I would rather address a problem once it arises. and I'm, uh, unless it was something that we could absolutely foresee. And I'm not certain that I can, I'm, I'm confident that that's gonna be a problem. Uh, along the same sort of lines as Councillor Bressy, um, if we're not able to communicate what's a priority to council and the stuff that needs to get done well, then, then we've got bigger problems. So uh, I'm, I, would, I would be more comfortable waiting to see that actually be a problem um, because I think the other benefits of speeding development are, are worthwhile here. The other part too is that um, Council uh, is discussing and debating the land use bylaw amendments uh, and the process map within that process administration has a great degree of flexibility when actually approving the process per se, uh, the way that it was mapped out. Um, there's at least one bubble in there that says circulate to internal and external stakeholders um, and that could include the city manager, you know, all the way up to and including the city manager if um, the situation demanded it. Um, so I just, I think that within the revised process, uh, management still has a lot of latitude uh, to seek the kind of input that they need to uh, if, if there's a situation where the direction isn't clear. Um, so for those two points, we're trying to solve a problem that I'm not, not sure has raised, raised its head um, and that I'm comfortable and confident and have a lot of trust in our management team uh, that they will seek the input that they need to at the stage they need to. I won't be supporting the motion. Uh, any other questions? Uh, comments before we go to Councillor Clayton to close? Seeing none, Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, first point I wanna make, this has nothing to do with lack of trust for administration. So, um, and as identified earlier, um, it's, uh, it's truly mitigating risk uh, for future councils and future administrations in my mind. And, and I think that uh, being preemptive and mitigating risk is a role of council. And so 
can, being reactionary to problems that come uh, as they come isn't always the best approach. So um, in regards though, I appreciate Dr. Galante's and Mr. Wright's comments in, in the process step that isn't identified there visually for me. Um, I, I am provided comfort from uh, both of you in regards to what will happen as the process, but it, if it was a little clearly identified, more clearly identified, it would have probably not have, uh, have raised uh, concern with me initially. I do believe that council uh, is very clear and that CLT has uh, full intent of executing the vision of council and that this, uh, um, I would call it foresight of the current council is um, optimistic and in turn very uh, high level visionary thinkers and I think that CLT sees that vision. I just truly believe that we need to be in any case uh, mitigate risk for extending uh, delays in, in opportunities within our housing corp uh, um, opportunity. So I would encourage council to consider the identified items that I've identified today as potential items that could come back to IPES as a preemptive opportunity to um, increase the speed for development within our community. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Uh, so with that, that's the close on Councillor Clayton's amendment. Uh, is everybody still clear on what the amendment was? We need to, okay, I'm seeing some nods, so, okay. Uh, then we will call for the vote on Councillor Clayton's amendment. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion does not carry. Uh, so we'll go back to second reading uh, as moved by Councillor Bressy. Uh, were there any other amendments arising to Councillor Bressy, Councillor Bressy's motion for second reading? Councillor Friesen. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, so I would like to uh, make the motion to amend and it was in, I, uh, sorry, uh, our, our C and our H, wasn't it? <clears throat> now I have to go back to it on here. Here we go. So I would like the uh, to to suggest that we amend to have the mixed use department building and residential care facility in R H come to IPS and in R M it would be child care. Uh, sorry, it would be mixed use department building and residential care facility. What was the other one? RC, RC, the up to the residential care up to 20 units um, to move under the discretion, under the authority of IPS. Okay, so can you clarify? Um, it's a, a bit off the cuff, and so I would <laughs> yeah, want to make sure that I'm getting, um, getting it because it wasn't 100% clear. So it is our. So we have, uh, okay, so we have RT, apartment building up to eight units, mixed use apartment building, and residential care facility. I'd missed that one. Okay. So I just want to clarify first before we go through the listing of them, Councillor Clayton just made a motion that was defeated with respect to mixed use multi, so if there's some, and so that was decided by council, was yeah. defeated. Um, I, I, I'm going to rule to say that I think your motion shouldn't include th those matters again. If you want to do the care, residential care facility, then that's a different matter. I would like to include them again because I had indicated that they would be, that I would follow up a mo with a motion to to um, include all of them. So was I miss, remiss to say I would follow up with the motion to include all or that I would just follow up with a residential care? Sure, well, I so. I would have done. Well, I, I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. I, I will withdraw it. I don't think that um, it's worth being on the table if if I'm not bringing back the others. Okay. Yeah, and, and if that's the okay. case. Yeah, like council just defeated uh, Councillor Clayton's motion, which other than the residential care facility was the same motion that you're making. Right, so that would not be for consideration again then, period? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you want to add the residential care facility, no, then that's I No, matter. then I won't. Council hasn't decided on it. That's fine. Yeah? No, then that, I, I, okay. uh, no, no motion. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote on Councillor Bressy's motion for second reading. Please vote. That motion carries. Councillor Bressy. 
Thank you. I would move that we have third reading of bylaw C-1260-97 at this meeting. Hey, thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. So this is a motion to have third and final reading of this uh, land use bylaw amendment uh, here tonight. Uh, in order to have third and final reading, uh, this motion must pass unanimously. If the motion doesn't pass unanimously, then third and final reading will come back at a subsequent council meeting. Is there any discussion or debate uh, as to the merits of having third and final reading here tonight? Seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Please vote. That motion carries unanimously, so we can have third reading. Councillor Bressy, you're still on the clock. Thank you. I would move that we give third reading to bylaw C-1260-97, being an amendment to the land use bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Is there any discussion or debate on third and final reading of bylaw C-1260-97? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. I think that handles all of our uh, items under public hearings. Uh, we have no items of unfinished business and no reports, and so we'll go straight into committee business, starting with item 9.1, Community Living Committee meeting from June 19th. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I would move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Living Committee meeting held on Tuesday, Jan June 19th, 2018, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Are there any errors or omissions or changes we need to make to that set of minutes before we adopt them? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. As promised at our last council meeting, we did have a lot of returning items coming back uh, and coming forward to council. And uh, this is the sequence of events that will approve or not allow. Uh, what has come forward from committee, the first being the Arms Length Housing Development Corporation. I would move that council authorize use of public housing reserve up to $80,000 for the development of a business case analysis for an Arms Length Housing Development Corporation. Uh, just speaking to this, this has been debated and discussed at uh, our committee for a couple of years now. Uh, it went back for more information and came back with uh, the original intended result, which was to uh, use some of our public housing reserve dollars to help fund the, the business case planned to develop uh, Arms Length Housing Corporation. So this won't cost any extra money. It is what we have a reserve for, and I encourage everyone to vote for it. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Yes, before I go on, I'd just like to thank Council for your support in that. Uh, this means that our administration won't be working off the side of their desk trying to develop the, the best uh, housing corporation at arm's length that Alberta has ever seen, which I know we're on our way to that right away here through this. All right, moving on uh, to item 9.1.2, uh, policy 621, the naming rights and naming dedication policy. And to this, I would move that Council rescind policy 601, being the names for city parks and recreation facilities policy. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, and Councillor Thiessen stopped there because we actually have to rescind the one policy before we approve the new policy to put in place. And so is there any discussion or debate on the motion to rescind policy 601? I hear some discussion across. I hear some discussion, but I don't see anybody ringing in, so it must not be serious discussion. Uh, if there's nobody ringing in, then we'll call for the vote on Councillor Thiessen's motion to rescind policy 601. Please vote. You. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. All right, and uh, thanks uh, for approving that as well. I would move that Council approve policy 621 being the naming rights and naming dedication policy. Uh, speaking to this, this is a more robust naming policy and plan that we're setting into effect uh, by passing this. Uh, the old one was a little sparse in its information and its direction. Uh, this one would uh, give the authority for up to $250,000 of naming rights uh, I guess duties, uh, hand it over to administration and anything higher than that and or um, uh, if we're looking to uh, name anything city dedicated, a uh, piece of land or property, uh, it would all come through council. So really we're only giving up our sponsorship naming appeal to this and uh, for up to 250,000, anything more than that or longer than the five years that was anticipated uh, would still come back to council. 
Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on Councillor Thiessen's motion to approve policy 621? Seeing nobody ring in, I'll just say uh, thank you very much to the management team that worked on this. Uh, went uh, back and forth to committee a couple times for revisions and appreciate uh, the work that went into the policy and the procedure that's attached as well. Um, it's, uh, I think it really reflects uh, a modern way of doing this and it's pretty robust and still allows for appropriate council input and oversight and something that's very visible to the, to the public, very public facing. Um, so thanks very much to the management team for the work on this. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Council Thiessen. Awesome. I would move that uh, on the Low Income Recreation Access Program, aka the Lira Program, that Council approve the 75-25 percentage cost share Lira subsidy program. Uh, and speaking to this, I'll just give Council, uh, at least the members who weren't at committee that day, a bit of background. Uh, the Low Income Recreation Access Program started in 2011 uh, for low income residents receiving uh, credits uh, to be used at city run facilities. The objective is to invest in the health and well being of our lower income citizens. Um, we, in the past, have used a credit system, uh, and over the past few years, have found that uh, these credits haven't been used. Uh, the last three years, in particular, is about 51% usage, uh, which in the past we had a carryover which we just recently stopped as well so that uh, it wouldn't impact the East Link Center budget any further. Uh, the idea behind implementing a 75-25 rather than 100% uh, cost share to the Lira program is that it's a hand up rather than a handout. And uh, part of this uh, procedure, uh, we would be moving our low income residents who would be applying for this out of the community social development offices, which is where they'd apply for it now, and into the East Link Center uh, so that they can have like a one-stop shop uh, and have all of the people there guiding them through the process and allowing them to, to I guess, uh, support their own recreation needs uh, at a marginal cost. So uh, our hope is that we'll have more uptake uh, in, in the program, at least in the credits being used, and that the people who are using it and investing it would use it even more because they've already chipped in some money to be able to access the facilities and other programs. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the motion? I have one question for management, and just recognizing that there's a number of administration team here, it would seem a shame if you sort of all came and then took the seat and then nobody ever asked any questions. But, uh, but uh, at the committee, we had a bit of a discussion about uh, whether or not the Lira program would still be accessible uh, for pro city programming other than the East Link Centre. Um, and so uh, I don't know if there's somebody that can address uh, how that will be handled or uh, if any changes have been made to the approach since we discussed it at committee. Uh, Mr. Wheeler? Uh, yes, uh, as we're developing the process, uh, we will ensure that uh, all programs are, are included in the process as well as camps and other programs throughout the, throughout the uh, city. Sure. Great. Thanks very much. And so there's nothing at a policy level that needs to do that. It's just a sort of a, the technology back end to make sure that, that can be a, those credits can be applied. Mr. Wheeler? Yeah, and it's it's really asking the questions too, and, and making sure we're we're getting intimate with the with the customers that we're working with, and knowing what their needs are, and fulfilling their needs. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Yes, I still have more business to attend to here. Uh, this one being policy 201, the fees and charges uh, for the Bear Creek Outdoor Pool. I would move that council approve the policy 201 being the fees and charges policy as amended. Uh, this amendment uh, will reflect uh, some minor changes, uh, adding in certain facilities into the fees and charges schedule, but mostly to uh, include the Bear Creek Outdoor Pool charges, uh, which it should be opening sometime this summer. Uh, it was amended. Originally, administration came forward and uh, had uh, some price points uh, for 375 for children, 3 to 12, uh, 550 for youth, 13 to 17, adults, 18 plus, seven dollars, and uh, seniors at 550, and families at 1750. Committee saw that uh, and looking at the extrapolation back to 2012, and saw that there wasn't that much of a big upcharge, maybe a quarter here or a quarter there and just decided to round it up to more round numbers. Uh, the new fees and charges as amended are presented in your package, but uh, in case 
anyone hasn't read them, uh, it would increase the cost of the child through to 12 years from 375 to four, uh, the youth uh, from 550 to six, the adult from seven to eight dollars, seniors from 550 to six, and the family pass from 1750 to 20 dollars. Uh, the reasoning behind that and the motion made, uh, which is totally debatable here at the council table, was that uh, people uh, aren't going to miss the quarters in their pockets, and it just makes for a smart, easy roundup math. And then if we have to raise the, the charges in the future, it doesn't uh, seem as gross uh, when we do that uh, in the future. Uh, so anyways, it's open for debate and discussion. Uh, I encourage everyone to support this. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Clayton. May I give in a question for Councillor Thiessen or possibly for administration? I'm assuming the initial um, charges as laid out from administration to committee were based on a cost recovery. Uh, if that's incorrect, let me know. But otherwise, what was committee's intent to increase it based on the fact that the initial cost would have been um, substantial enough to be at a break-even basis on the facility? Uh, yeah. Uh, can, we, can you speak for committee? Can I speak for committee? We'll give it I, I can dis uh, discuss how we came up with the initial uh, fees for it. We basically took an inflation rate of 2.5% and added it to the original years from 2012, which was when the last time the facility was used and open. Uh, and at that point, we just added that that amount. And uh, when it was brought forward to uh, committee and, and they felt that it was a little bit low, uh, we are budgeted at a 54% uh, cost recovery at this point in time. So um, to administration then, um, you put an inflationary cost on, a, on an older facility uh, with different parameters and operational um, abilities, but you still had a 54% cost recovery or did you look at the operational cost model of the new facility as it will be and then put a in rate of inflation increase on it? Mr. Miller? Uh, our original forecast was uh, for a little bit higher, uh, but we we needed to come up with a with a plan that was, uh, I guess, um, manageable and 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 formulated in a way that it made a lot of sense. Because I know that we do, we've done a two point five percent increase in the past, and so that's why we decided to go with that model uh, to determine the the initial fees. So, if I can have a follow up. Um, um if you're so administration is comfortable that the facility would be. Um, at a break even at 54% recovery at the initial laid out prices uh, that committee changed? Uh, this in, in, in an extent may help that 54%. Uh, we haven't gone back and done the math on it, but depending on uh, the volume of people going through our uh, through the facility this summer, uh, it may be deterred a little bit because of our late opening, because it's to, you know to delayed our ability to uh, generate revenue, but uh, we're confident that we'll at least be at the 54% and potentially a little bit higher with the fee increases. I guess my concern is, is that um, I can see committee's intent, you know, in your comment in regards to people aren't going to miss a quarter in their pocket. But personally, my intent of this pool is to be utilized to its maximum potential with as many people have access to it as possible. And so when you start to add up repeat number of visits, and if you look at family visits, it's a substantial jump from 1750 to 20. So if we want families to go as often as possible, those dollars add up. And so my question is, is can the facility, based on your numbers, survive at 54% cost recovery at the initially laid out prices? I guess one of the things that uh, when we looked at the initial uh, budget it was for a four month period and, and then we when we found out we were going to be delayed uh, we felt that we needed to come up with, with some numbers that will keep us at 54% but one of the things that I've always focused on is how can we lose less and this will actually allow us to, to potentially lose less um, potentially get above the 54% but your point of having a shorter operating season then you have shorter expenses you have less expenses too so on a per user basis is 375 enough for an individual child well, to well council clayton i mean i think uh management's recommendation was the 375 right. and so if you want to debate whether 375 is enough that was their recommendation okay. it's the committee members that chose to vary the recommendation so that's probably a, if you disagree with the number that's here then the, the debate is probably with council members. Yeah. Because uh, management actually recommended a different number. 
Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh, well, my. My uh, mic has been active uh, the entire time. If I can just uh, relay, and if I'm wrong for any of the committee members, we have two of them here as well as myself. Uh, part of uh, the idea behind just raising the prices a little bit is it is a very affordable pool, uh, even priced at the price increases by not missing a quarter in the pocket. Uh, you th spend 375, you're still spending four bucks. You're just getting a quarter in your pocket. Um, the prices uh, as compared it, uh, the 2012 to the 2018 uh, prices, there wasn't a significant jump. There was 50 cents for a child, a dollar for youth, a dollar for adults, and 250 for family. Um, it is still a very, very affordable pool. We also have the punch passes that are available and included in the fees and charges as well, which is uh, sort of retains that affordability uh, uh, fee percentage that we're discussing right now, the 375. Uh, and uh, committee, I believe, felt that it wasn't uh, too much of a price push up. Uh, and uh, we very much feel, as, as you do, and want and believe that uh, the Bear Creek pool will be a very full pool regardless of the, the changes here. And comparing to other comparables, like the Spirit River outdoor pool, uh, we're right in line with those with those price points as well. So we didn't see a big, a big issue on it. And, and just, I see Councilor Friesen in the queue. And just from my recollection at the committee, I believe uh, the, the Spirit River Pool, these numbers are either at or still below in some cases uh, the fee, uh, the entry fee at the Spirit River Pool, which is the other like facility in the region, never mind that it's an hour of gas away. Um, so that was another reason at the committee level why I was confident that this was still pretty good value for dollar. Um, Councilor Friesen. Thank you, Mayor Given. <clears throat> I will support the uh, the amendment with that little increase. Um, not only are we recovering a little bit uh, for inflation and and uh, have reasonable cost recovery from use of the pool, but we're also comparing this new pool to what was closed down a few years ago, and this is a really different uh, different pool. And I think more than anything else this summer, I've heard when is that pool going to be open. Um, is it on track? All that sort of thing. And I have friends who are not only going to Spirit River, but Dawson Creek um, for for this kind of activity. So I, th I, you know, I think we'll be okay with that. I'll, I'll certainly support it. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Any other discussion or debate? Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I think I'm with Councillor Clayton on this one in asking about the necessity for the increase above what was recommended by administration. Um, I understand we're only talking two bits here and there, but um, by the same token, um, administration believed that we would recover what we needed at the rates that they recommended, and I think that our rounding it up is simply a matter of trying to increase our revenue, and I wonder if we're increasing our revenue at the cost of, of um, families who really depend on us standing up for them and making things as affordable as we can for those people. Um, I don't have the numbers to be able to suggest an amendment going back to the amounts uh, recommended by administration, but uh, if those numbers are available, I'd be prepared to remove that amendment. I'm sure uh, we could find that for you. Um, Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. So uh, I won't support the motion. I think that administ uh, I have confidence in the ability of administration to do their work and presented numbers to committee that were um, were what was, uh, in their opinion, um, a good number. I think that uh, uh, echoing Councillor Blackburn's comments to throw an extra two bits here and there on it is not the intent of of what we saw for vision for this pool. We wanted it to be accessible, a, re a retreat from the sun, and to have it extensively utilized. And I don't see, you can't give me any good reason why you increased the price, so I won't support the motion. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Councillor Bressy. Thank you. This is an interesting conversation to me for more than just this pool and that I think we're going to have a lot of this type of conversation in the fall as we're digging into fee reviews. So it's kind of exciting to give ourselves a little teaser of where Council might stand then. And I think my philosophy is I'd like to see us to see in general charging a little bit more for fees. I'd like to see us finding higher cost recoveries than we're finding. There was illusion to making it easier in the city for families of lower income to get by. And in my mind, a high priority there is finding a way to 
to, to stop raising taxes on them and to stop these, and stop general subsidies of every single user of a pool, which may or may not be low income, may or may not be city residents. So for that reason, I support a slightly higher fee. And what I would be supportive of is if we're saying, hey, this pool is inaccessible to families of certain incomes, well, then let's look at, we just talked about our Lira program. Let's start, let's look at maybe raising the income that somebody that's that somebody needs to be under before they qualify for that if we're worried about our low-income families accessing facilities let's not let's not help them out at the expense of our cost recovery ratio let's look at the programs that are actually targeted to them and let's not subsidize non-city residents uh, let's not subsidize people that don't need the subsidies more more than we already are Thanks, Councilor Russi. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just say from uh, the discussion of the committee, um, I absolutely wouldn't characterize it as, uh, as uh, hey, let's just round it up just because. Uh, There's a pretty thoughtful discussion about comparators in the market. Um, it was also the same agenda where we had the Lira program where uh, a resident or family uh, in need can get up to 75% savings uh, towards the cost of exactly this kind of facility. So I think with that in mind, uh, we it, we're really on the train of thought, as Councillor Bressy highlighted, that you know there are opportunities for the city to support. If there if this change was a barrier, uh, the city actually has support specifically for those uh, those individuals or families that might be impacted. Uh, and so it was a pretty thoughtful discussion. Uh, I wouldn't have characterized it as as just sort of a roundup. Uh, just to make the numbers, you know, all end in zero. Uh, I think it was a much more uh, sort of intent behind that uh, to say, well, look, we appreciate that property taxes are concerned. Uh, we need to be looking at our fees and charges, uh, recognizing that we have other supports available for people that may be on modest incomes and need additional support. This is not an unreasonable uh, increase. And so, um, so, yeah, just in terms of the discussion around the committee table, uh, I think it was fairly, fairly thoughtful. Councillor Thiessen? Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I uh, just want to commend uh, Councillor Bressy. You took all the words out of my mouth. You probably spoken better than they would have fallen out of mine. But uh, uh, yeah, no, I just maybe I, I, I brought this in to add the two bits in the roundup, but that definitely wasn't the intent of the committee. I can guarantee you, Councillor Clayton, that regardless of what the charges end up being, this nominal increase or what, it, what they were originally, uh, the pool will be full on the hot days. Uh, it will be well used. People will be appreciative of it. It is affordable, uh, and uh, I, I don't think I need to remind you that uh, we were sitting here one council term ago discussing the merits of even having a second pool because of the cost to expenses to run them. Um, I don't want to bring, not no, not you and not I, but uh, that was the discussion around the table uh, back when we were even debating the Bear Creek pool opening, and uh, I'm just happy to see it open. And honestly, uh, I want to give administration every opportunity that they have in every way, especially around fees and charges, that they can uh, free up some more resources to do the work that they need to do. Um, and so with that, I'll just close. Okay. Well, actually, Councillor Tool is also in the queue, so you don't get to close before Councillor Tool. <laughs> Councillor Tool. Seems to me you've done this to me, so I'm just returning the favor. Uh, I want to thank administration very much for the hard work you've done, and I do appreciate uh, being sort of under the a good number, leave it at that. And I do understand the council members that were at the table there to make the decision to go a little bit higher. I do understand that as well. But I will be supporting the policy 101 as presented tonight. Um, 201. 201, sorry. Um, and with that, uh, we're gonna be reviewing these again. Uh, we haven't really had any use of this pool yet at this point in time. And uh, I would like to see it the, a very, in the future, a very affordable price that everybody can attend. Uh, I've been on council here for a number of years when that pool is closed. And I don't know how many times I've got emails and phone. Uh, when are we opening that? Why are we leaving that there? And I just want to see it open. And then we can talk about how successful it is in the fall. So thank you. Thanks, Councillor Tool. I don't see anybody else in the queue. Councillor Thiessen, would you like to close? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, so with nobody else in the queue, then we will move on to the vote on Councillor Thiessen's uh, motion, uh, which contains the fees and charges uh, policy um, as recommended by the committee. Um, please vote.
Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Councillor Thies, did you have anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? Um, yeah, yeah, you know what, there was uh, one other uh, set of business, uh, two others actually. We did have uh, uh, a report come back on uh, the use of uh, facilities for roller derby, uh, which was uh, a good presentation. Uh, administration assured committee that we'll continue to work with the group and try to find them suitable space. Uh, right now there was no free space available uh, or gym space uh, that wouldn't scratch it up. So. I uh, encourage everyone, uh, if you're passionate about roller derby, uh, to go to their event. I think it's on the 28th of July. Uh, head on out there. Did I get that right? Awesome. Uh, and also, we had a letter of correspondence from the Arctic Winter Games uh, requesting on whether or not the City of Grand Prairie would be willing to host uh, in the year 2022 for the Arctic Winter Games. Okay. Thanks, Councillor uh, Thiessen. Councillor Clayton, question? Yeah, I just had a question for Councillor Thiessen. Can you expand a little bit on the discussion in regards to, um, I, I know what the CARES funding is, et cetera, but for a GPRTA looking for support, uh, what specifically is the project? Could you expand a little bit on that for me? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing that up. I actually made a note in my head. I didn't write it down anywhere, though. Um, GPRTA uh, came in. Uh, we had a, a slight discussion. Uh, this is a couple of council meetings ago, and uh, there was a recommendation from administration just to uh, put in our $10,000 uh, uh, to sort of match what the county had, had given as far as the GPRTA uh, funds. Uh, there was discussion brought in by Councillor Blackburn at that committee meeting uh, asking us to uh, put in the extra 50 cents or to consider it. Um, and I believe that discussion uh, will be talked about at the budget, but there was no motions made to refer it to there. Councillor Blackburn, did you have something to add? Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that the whole purpose of the uh, making the $10,000 contr contribution was that the CARES grant that was received by the Tourism Association needed to be matched in order for them to get the money. And so that was our contribution towards that match. Thanks, Councillor Blackburn, our Tourism Association uh, rep Council Representative. Uh, I think if that was everything from Community Living, then we'll move on to the Corporate Services Committee meeting on item 9.2, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. I move the Council receive the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee meeting held Tuesday, June 19th, 2018, as presented. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Anything that we have to amend or change before we adopt them? Seeing nothing, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. I think I'm looking for one more, Council. They don't always register, eh? You really, really jam your thumb on that sometimes. Thank you. Uh, that motion carries. Councillor O'Toole. I got item 9.2.1, borrowing bylaw C-1381, which is, for me? 85. 1385, sorry. Downtown rehabilitation and streetscapes upgrade, phase three. And the recommendation is, uh, I move the council give first reading to bylaw C-1385, being the borrowing bylaw for the downtown rehabilitation and streetscapes, streetscapes upgrade phase three. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, open for, dis uh, sorry, yeah, first reading, excuse me. Uh, so first reading, this would come back at a subsequent council meeting. Uh, this is regular practice with borrowing. Uh, we don't actually do the borrowing until it's required. Uh, this is sort of preparatory steps so that uh, when it comes time that we have to have the cash in hand, uh, management would come back with the uh, second and third readings to finalize the borrowing bylaw. Uh, and thank you for that catch on my uh, desire to get into discussion and debate. Uh, so motion for first reading, uh, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, thank you very much. Councillor O'Toole, anything else you want to highlight? From the no, I was going to, but you just sort of filled in the blanks. Uh, we do this now to get it the, 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 the boat ready to sail, and when the time comes to take the money out of the bank, we're prepared for it. Uh, we also had an economic development advisory uh, committee uh, presented, uh, sorry, Mr. Brian Glavin, deputy director of the economic development, presented the committee with uh, draft terms for the reference of the economic development advisory committee for consideration. And we had a procurement, procurement activity update uh, between April and May of 2018. 
and uh, we just had a just basically an update on what was taking place and basically how much money we were spending in the last uh, couple of months. So, and with that, uh, that's my report. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, we'll move on to the Pursuit of Excellence Committee meeting from June twentieth, and Councillor Friesen, I think that's your set of minutes. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Given. So I'd like to move that uh, we accept as presented the minutes from the Pursuit of Excellence Committee meeting. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Are there any errors or omissions to correct? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Friesen, anything you want to highlight from that set of minutes? I would. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, the Communi Community Foundation, uh, Tracy Zook and Tracy Vavrick, uh, presented with information regarding the Come Fly With Me Fund. Um, since the partnership began a few years ago, about $27,500 has been distributed to athletes throughout the region from this fund. And, uh, and that's... Uh, yeah, it, there's um, an ongoing amount annually that's uh, provided from through the foundation. And we gave away some money, so that was pretty cool. We gave away to uh, Gerald Logan for some coach development in mountain biking. We gave some money also to Andrea Locke for coach development in mountain biking. And the Grand Prairie Squash Club as a whole are going to host a clinic, and we were able to support that. So uh, that was uh, the results of our meeting from June 20th. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Um, that'll take us to 9.4, the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee meeting. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council, I'm sorry, I'm ahead on different pages. But I'll move that Council accept the minutes uh, as presented for the Infrastructure and Protective Services meeting of June 26. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Uh, any discussion or debate, errors or omissions? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton, anything you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Um, just briefly, we addressed the one item tonight in the amendment to the land use bylaw. We also had a report from in regards to snow removal. Uh, if you have an opportunity, I suggest you go back and look at the agenda from that meeting. There was some good data there, um, and uh, and committee had a, a, a fairly extensive conversation on on uh, changes that were made this year to snow removal and and what worked and, and areas of potential improvement. So, um, you know, there was a lot of snow this year, as people recall, um, and it was fairly steady throughout the year. Um, ultimately, um, administration uh, was happy with uh, the outcomes. Uh, we talked about the potential of uh, what changes could happen to priority twos were a lot of the discussion that day. Um, and I did have some highlights that I wanted to highlight and I can't seem to find them in my notes. So if there's anyone else that was there that wanted to highlight something on snow removal, that would be appreciated. <laughs> Other than that, we had an update from the downtown um, uh, in regards to the downtown construction uh, as well. Uh, the Director of Infrastructure and Protective Services gave an overall update of, of the numerous things that are happening in his portfolio. And that's my report. Thanks. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Um, I don't. We didn't have any items of correspondence this evening, and no delegation business. And we had no notices of motion, so that'll take us to council member reports. Um, and I'll first recognize uh, Councillor Bressy, who stood in for uh, myself and Councillor Pallott, who are away at the Joint Regional Recreation Master Plan Committee. Councillor Bressy. Great. Well, thank you. It was great to go and sit on that committee. I was excited to talk about recreation. I was excited to talk about working together as a region. But it was also, my, I think my highlight of it was we had a roundtable where every municipality got to go around and say what's going on in recreation in your municipality. And holy smokes, there's a lot to do in this region. And it was exciting to get to hear what's going on outside of city limits to me. I think the big highlight was the Regional Recreation Committee has now hired a part-time staff person. She's housed in the county, but she's an employee of the of the committee. She's not accountable to the county. She's ca accountable to this committee. And I was impressed by her. She carries an impressive resume. She seems to be on the ball. And I think she's going to do great things for our region, providing some leadership, some organization. This. So that was exciting to get to meet her. I'm excited for the rest of you to get to, see, get to meet her as well. Uh, we didn't have a lot of conclusions to the discussions, largely because the MD was, wasn't in the room. 
but our biggest topic of discussion was uh, was cost sharing. What's the formula going to be to decide decide who pays how much for what? And the big topic of discussion there was: Does linear assessment get counted in that formula, or does it not? And no conclusion was reached, although we had some great discussion about it. But what is going to be happening is in September, the consultant and the staff are going to be bringing together some numbers of what funding looks like with linear assessment in and what funding looks like without linear assessment in these models. And I think that'll be very interesting to look at, not just for the sake of recreation, but for all these other discussions we're going to be having. So it was a fascinating conversation. I was glad to dive bomb into. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Bresti, and thanks for dive bombing in on short notice uh, when others of us were away. Um, Councillor Thiessen, I think you had the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mayor. Given, uh, I think it's a once in a 20 year opportunity that I got to take part in uh, from June 19th to the 22nd, where the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance had the opportunity to host the WPAC Summit. So, all the province's WPACs, all 11, convened in the mighty upon the mighty peace river in the town of peace river uh and we had our, our first ever wpac forum as hosted by the mighty peace watershed alliance uh for that to that extent i was tasked with the uh with the duties of mc and also to moderate the friday event uh, but uh, we were able to give uh, all of our guests uh, that were visiting our local watershed uh a great uh, run through on what the Peace River is and how important it is to the hydrology of the entire province. Uh, we had uh, several presentations from the province uh, as far as the wetlands management uh, programs are going. Uh, the, we also had uh, several other presentations. One that I have to highlight, and I know I've spoken about it before at a council meeting, but it just, uh, it was the talk of the conference, and that was the Big Stone Cree Nation's Wabasca Lake Source Water Protection Plan, uh, as presented by Troy Stewart, which they are now in the process of implementing all of their recommendations. Um, and I have to say uh, that it has evolved since the bare bone stages that we saw it within a year ago. Yeah, it was a year ago that I first saw the, their Source Water Protection Plan, and it was very bare bones. Now it looks super professional, and they've done it all themselves, uh, all mainly funded by NADC. Uh, and uh, INAC uh, in order to make it happen, uh, but people were talking about it. And a big takeaway for me, especially uh, talking with people across the province, is uh, as part of our integrated watershed management plan process, uh, we've been encouraging all communities around the Peace River to engage in doing their own source water protection plan to ensure that everyone knows where their water is, how clean their water is, and, uh, and to ensure that it stays that way. Um, this is a new concept to a lot of the WPACs uh, south of us. So we're actually kind of ahead of the game. So we had a lot of uh, breakaway sessions uh, that uh, leaned on that. Uh, and uh, some, uh, some communities have just started undertaking those uh, actions in their own watershed. So it was nice to see that uh, the, the importance of which is not just uh, upon the Peace River region, it is also upon all the other WPACs, and we're a bit ahead of the game, so they're looking to us for that. So good job to all of our administration staff in the Watershed Alliance. I uh, also wanted to uh, start another one, a presentation from a recently elected uh, Alberta representative, Anne Lisa Jensen, to the FCM board, but she gave a presentation on uh, the Sturgeon River Watershed Alliance, which actually operates outside of provincial government funding. They're completely funded by the seven municipalities that surround them, uh, including uh, including uh, Parks County, uh, uh, let's see, Edmonton, City of Edmonton, the Duke, Beaumont, uh, DeBolt, uh, Spruce Grove, and Stony Plain. Um, so it was uh, pretty neat to see that uh, when municipalities combine their resources and then their determination for something as important as water, which in her presentation, uh, the Sturgeon River ran dry one year, and they were looking at in being in a water crisis. That's something we don't necessarily have to worry about all, uh, right away in the Peace River area, but if we don't uh, take care of our source water, uh, then we risk uh, having the same things happen to us since then municipalities usually have to pick it up because we're the most nimble of, of all forms of government. Uh, speaking to that, uh, when I had the opportunity to moderate on the Friday, I put a challenge out to the other WPACs. Um, and I don't know if they really took it up on it, but the question that I presented the panel was, uh, would you be behind backing uh, a mandatory charge by government uh, on industry for anyone who draws water to go and support WPACs? Uh, not necessarily for the next election, but in the next two to three years, 
Uh, we have an air shed zone that is well funded because uh, it is mandated that industry has to chip in and uh, water being as or more important than the air we breathe, uh, being as fluid as it is as air, uh, I think that WPAC should have the same sort of benefits that uh, that industry receives from, from putting into the water. So uh, there's some that are good and don't pollute it. There's others that draw more than their fair share. And I think that uh, it would be a good way to raise funds and revenue. Uh, the discussions following that uh, seemed to be more convincing. But instantly, right away, looking at the crowd, I saw a lot of head shaking, like, we're just happy with the money that we're getting right now. Let's not push it. But I think we have to push it, especially when we're talking about a resource that is so important to all life in and around everyone's uh, municipalities, regions, and province and country. There are countries that don't have water, and some people have to walk like four hours just to get a jug. So uh, I want to ensure that we have that and that we have uh, the administration team surrounding the WPAC groups to address any issues that may come up in the future. So hopefully we'll uh, find a little more uh, of an emphasis to move in that direction. And uh, yeah, if we get any support from this municipality to move in that uh, sort of conversation, I'd be even more encouraged. So it was a glorious uh, retreat. Like I said, it only happens once every 20 years. We all share the duties. Uh, and this was the third WPAC summit ever held. So we won't see it again because they're only every two years. So by then, I'll either be dead or not on council anymore. So it was uh, great to be a part of things. So I just want to clarify, you said every two years or every 20 years? Because I'm trying to decide when you're going to die. Okay. No, no. Well, every two years, a WPAC hosts it. Okay. And every, so it'll come back to the Peace River in 20 okay. years. Okay. 22 so years. So we'll be to back be to this region for another 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Maybe oh. I should clarify that. So I'm, I'm, no, I, I'm I like your chances. For the rest of this time. Don't worry, guys. I like your <laughs> chances, Councillor Thiessen. I like your chances. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's been a little while since I've called my own number on uh, council member reports, and so I'll just uh, provide two. Uh, for the AUMA, uh, we recently had an AUMA board meeting and a joint planning session with the board of AMSC. And so AMSC is the Alberta Municipal Services Corporation. It's the arm of AUMA that does things like insurance and uh, uh, electrical and uh, sort of uh, power um, co-purchasing and a whole bunch of other services. The city of Grand Prairie is a subscriber to many of those services. Um, it was an interesting model of a uh, board and a uh, subsidiary uh, or a, an independent sort of board getting together to have a strategic discussion about shared priorities. And it was a, just a, a really uh, insightful model of how you can have those sort of conversations if there's a commitment from the two entities, even though technically speaking, uh, the EUMA board uh, doesn't have a reporting relationship with the AMSC board. It's not as though they report to us. Um, but it was, it was interesting uh, to see nonetheless. Uh, we also discussed uh, some of the work that AUMA is doing around advocacy. Uh, with, uh, it sounds like there will be more intent to sort of encourage members uh, to become uh, advocates uh, as well. Um, and for council members, you will see uh, Mayor Barry from Brooks, uh, the AUMA president, is planning a summer uh, tour to hit as many AUMA member communities as he can. Uh, he has an RV booked and rented and uh, has a route that will take him all the way up to, uh, I believe he's going to make it up to high level uh, area uh, on our side, all the way up, down, and uh, he's got a few loops. And so uh, sometime in August he will be here. I'm sure uh, the management team will hear from AUMA as they sort of make their plans. Um, and But his intent will be to, you know, sort of make a stop at a place, uh, have some kind of event uh, relatively informal, um, and try to catch up with councils that might be meeting uh, or to invite council members uh, to, uh, to to get together. And so I would encourage council to watch out for that sometime in August. Uh, and then one other note um, from AUMA. Um, AUMA does a, a process of uh, recommending people for a bunch of appointments just like we do for external boards and commissions. Um, and I received a letter the other day uh, that I was selected by the province um, as the rep from AUMA for the Power and Natural Gas Consumers Panel. I don't know what that is. I don't know when it meets. Uh, it may never meet, um, but I'm, I'm on it, and it sounds pretty important. Um, but <laughs> so a little bit like our external committees, um, council members will get appointed to those, and, and you sort of wait to find out. <laughs> um, and uh, that's another uh, example of that, but at the AUMA level. And then uh, finally, I noticed that it's been a little while since we reported on the Tri-Municipal Industrial Partnership. Uh, we did have a meeting 
I think that's just last week now. Um, uh, for council's information, um, the uh, TMIP has uh, developed a, a relationship with a firm to sort of shepherd the project as a senior project manager. Excuse me, manager. Um, and one of the main pieces of work that uh, the consultants are doing for us is advancing the development of an area structure plan. So just like we would have in the city, a, a land use plan that will set out sort of the areas that will be developed, uh, how they'll be developed, and phasing and everything else. Um, it's an, under a pretty aggressive schedule. The uh, TMIP uh, has received good support from Alberta Environment and Parks and uh, other departments of the province. Um, they are uh, absolutely pushing to see that they that this uh, advances quickly. Um, and under the project charter that is being developed between uh, Tri Municipal Industrial Partnership and the province of Alberta, um, they foresee the province wants to see the area structure plan delivered to the MD for consideration and ultimately to the province um, by the end of this year. Um, so uh, f I'm, you know, we we only get to see area structure plans sort of when they're done at the council table, but I have a sense that a typical area structure plan, um, that's a pretty compressed schedule. So it's uh, it's good to see that everybody is on the same page with trying to move that uh, item forward. And uh, there is ongoing discussion uh, with the province of Alberta uh, up to the deputy minister level on how the uh, Crown uh, can facilitate the transfer of land uh, in a way that would allow private development to happen on it because right now uh, the majority or almost uh, all of the land there is actually crown land and so one of the main challenges for investment to locate there is uh, an investor would look at it and say well we would love to build a something there um, but we don't know if the province will um, will uh, will sell it essentially um, and uh, the information that we have is that's typically about an 18 month to 24 month process um, to find out whether the province would sell you, not whether you've got environmental approvals and everything else that you'd have to do. So the TMIP sees that as a key piece to um, de-risk uh, for investment, um, and we're proceeding with the support of Alberta Environment and Parks, who are sort of leading that for the um, uh, for the government. And as I said, up to up to the deputy minister level, who's been very supportive and has put the full weight of uh, Alberta Environment and Parks uh, behind the initiative to get it going. Um, so that's my two updates, uh, Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Gavin. I apologize. I forgot to give you uh, the heads up that I have uh, two external committees to report on. Uh, very briefly on each of them, the first one is the uh, Tourism Association. Um, we met um, on the 21st of June, and the one item that I'll uh, let you know is that uh, for the CARES grant that we received, it was $35,000, uh, we've achieved all of the matching uh, so that we're able to go ahead and that money is going to be used um, to create or to get some help to create a, um, a business plan for the future um, of uh, tourism planning uh, for the region. Uh, the other committee that I attended was Grand Spear Foundation Full Board. Um, fairly um, busy meeting the full board only meets quarterly and there's an executive committee that reach, meets uh, the rest of the months of the year so we were at amos court in beaver lodge um, they hosted us for the full board meeting um, on the 22nd of june um, two things i'll highlight for you one is that the uh, business plan and the capital plan for 2019 to 21 uh, has been accepted and uh, just wanted to give you a heads up that that uh, budget will include a 5% requisition increase for 2019. Uh, same kind of increase as we had in this past year. Uh, relatively small dollar-wise for, uh, for residents. Uh, the second thing I'll highlight is that um, the um, facility at Lakeview in Claremont has had a sudden uptake and is filling up quite quickly. It looks like uh, people are, are uh, really quite interested in, um, in living there. And in May and June, we had quite a large increase. So it's not full yet, but uh, it's, it's suddenly moving. So a uh, successful facility and um, well appreciated by the public. And that's all I had. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Were there any other reports from external agencies, boards, and commissions? Seeing Councillor O'Toole. Mayor Given, uh, I just got one report. It's through the uh, uh, Francophone and Francophile Cities Network. 
we had a meeting here last week, uh, a fellow named Dennis Desgrat, uh come to Grand Prairie, and he just did a, a day-long tour of what's going on, the facilities, and uh, everything's going good. I just want to let you know that uh, if there was any concerns about if this was going to be a good thing or not, one of the hotels has got 300 days booked in hotel rooms because of this conference. So that's a huge undertaking. Uh, when I was in uh, Halifax, I talked to the people at the, at the event that we had out there, and most of the people that are coming here are not coming just for the event. They're planning on spending at least a week to 10 days up in the peace country. And uh, so for a tourism part, this is a great attraction for the city. Um, there are people coming in from uh, Haiti, Louisiana, Quebec City, Brazil, and pretty much all the provinces in, uh, in Canada. So uh, it's going to be a shaker, a French-speaking shaker. So thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Um, so we'll start with Councillor Roundtable, and we'll look to Councillor Friesen. There we go. Thanks very much. So I just had a blast uh, over the last couple of weeks with a ton of events. Um, I deeply enjoy uh, Indigenous culture and, and heritage, so I enjoyed those events. But I have to say, the highlight of my uh, last couple of weeks was actually a tour at Camp Tamarack. And it's because it was kind of new to me. I hadn't been out there for a couple of years. And they have fantastic stuff going on. What I didn't realize was that they are booked almost every day of the year, not just with camps, but with corporate and other events throughout the remainder of the year. And I guess I didn't realize how busy they were with that. Um, my business has used them a few times for various things. But uh, anyway, and on that tour, I was accompanied by uh, Councillor <clears throat> Bob Marshall from the county. So the two of us, as we went into our long, had to, of course, challenge each other. Sometimes we had to work as teammates, which we did uh, fairly well. Sometimes we had to challenge each other on the different courses and things. I won't say who's the better archer, but um, I can't wait to be back uh, at Camp Tamarack. So deeply enjoyed that. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Uh, we'll move next to Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mary Given. I attended a few events uh, just for fun, uh, one being the retirement celebration for Dan Piercy, who's leaving as the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, very well attended. Uh, everybody that spoke had um, high praise for Dan and the work that he's done for the community over the last 12 years, and certainly for the work that he's done and contributed to the community over his entire uh, life career here in Grand Prairie. So. Um, we had a great opportunity to wish him well, and uh, and I believe he's um, off to a, a great start in retirement. Um, I will also mention the uh, Dave Barr Kids Fair that the city held on the weekend. I took my uh, my grandson to that. It was a, a great event. It was very well attended. The weather cooperated so that we were able to uh, take part in the activities outside as well as inside. And um, uh, it was a great time. And uh, when it comes up again, I would encourage people to check it out. Um, that's it for this time. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I, I would like to talk about some events this week, but uh, I want to go on a time machine and uh, go back to uh, yeah, a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. At our last council meeting, we uh, sort of glossed over the roundtable events, and I think there are a bunch of really amazing events that... Uh, didn't get the, the press that they deserve. Uh, I just want to talk about things that fill me with pride, and uh, I think you might know where I'm going there. I, too, also enjoy Aboriginal and Indigenous events. The FNM, my community, is very, very near and dear to myself. So starting on June 8th, I had the opportunity with Councillors uh, Bressy, and Councillor Friesen, uh, and uh, I'm not sure, maybe Councillor Blackburn was there as well for the uh, Walking With Our Sisters event, the, the grand opening of that. Uh, and it ran for, for the entire week. I was able to go in there a second time and really take a look at the scope and the, the depth behind uh, all the things that people have lost, uh, the people, not just the things. The things are representative of the people there. Uh, and it was truly touching and really moving. Uh, and it filled me with a sense of pride that in a town like Grand Prairie, we can celebrate those those sorts of events 
that uh, our FMI community had worked very hard to put together and give them the same cultural uh, practices that they would otherwise enjoy inside of a city facility. I'm saying smudging. It is a pretty heavy event, uh, and there's some heavy energies attached to that. Uh, so it, that made me really, really proud. It also fills me with pride that uh, I work on a team of council members that on June 10th took the time out of their very busy day. I believe that's uh, councillors Kevin O'Toole, Jackie Clayton, Yad Minhas, and Mayor Bill Given to paint a rainbow crosswalk to show that uh, everybody has a voice and that uh, we're going to put in our time and energy. So thanks for being a part of that team, everybody, uh, and making that happen where the rest of us maybe didn't have the time in that day. Uh, you really put a good face on City Council by being a part of that. What else fills me with pride is that uh, a few days later when that crosswalk got scarce-stitted, there's a good Samaritan out there that busted somebody to always give pause for second thought uh, to vandalize properties, especially when we're talking about the rights and freedoms of people and their ability to express themselves in our society. So good on you to that, that civilian, the good Samaritan that, uh, well, good, bad. I'm sure the guy that got punished with it uh, doesn't feel like they're a good Samaritan, but that fills me with pride. The Pilsner with Pride is being part of an organization that sacrifices their time uh, day in and day out and then in the evenings as well because on June 12th we celebrated Municipal Government Day and I think our, our staff uh, from every department like really pulled up their sleeves and really put together a good show that was uh, amazing for the community to take part in, a free barbecue. They gave uh, good advertisements for services and and I'm sure Councillor Bressy's thinking to himself, and we won in the Municipal Olympics. Well, yes, we did, but that doesn't fill me with pride. It got me a little trophy about that big. Uh, but it, it really made me proud to work for an organization where people would make that sacrifice. And I think Council's had their say behind the scenes, and I think Council will be even more involved in future Municipal Government Days as we have been in the past. And finally, what fills me with pride is the fact that I got to celebrate pride amongst friends and family and members, and the celebration was an all-day celebration. One, uh, we got to celebrate the downtown core, uh, where we had the sidewalk sale that I got to MC at on, on behalf of Ellen Rice, perhaps her last ever event in the Downtown Association. We had uh, the Rock Downtown event at Revolution Place. We had the, the GP Pride in White Gala as well. I think, though, especially with that downtown event, I was especially, especially proud to be there because uh, it was a, a party that I think Helen would be proud of and that everybody from the city, uh, community members, and our different city departments, especially Revolution Place, really pulled up their sleeves and made sure that we had a great opportunity for everybody to celebrate their pride. And nothing cheered it off more than uh, knowing that, uh, as a guy who loves to do murals himself, that we had community members. I'll look over to my left, uh, Erica Fisher, who worked very, very hard to ensure that we have a mural once again on our TELUS building, welcoming people to our downtown core. I don't also want to underplay. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, it does deserve a round of applause because I only painted the amphitheater years ago because when I tried to call TELUS and ask them if I could paint their building, they didn't return my calls. So <laughs> you're very forceful, and the mayor had a say in that too. And... Uh, and I think you really brought it together as something that all of Grand Prairie can be proud of and you can be proud of as well because every time you drive through these city streets, you're going to see that and know that you're responsible for putting something very beautiful and inclusive in our downtown core, which is only going radiate to radiate out to the edges of our city. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Gra Grand Prairie, uh, you make me very proud to be a part of you. And uh, I will uh, never say no. Before I go, though, I just wanted to say, as proud as I can be, uh, I can't take away the pride of a father. And I wanted to just uh, throw out uh, my congratulations to my colleague, Mr. Minhas, Yad Minhas, on the marriage of his daughter. It was a beautiful wedding. I didn't get to take in the party, but I got to see that. And I know, as a father, that's uh, something that we want to see our kids moving on and moving on in love. So congratulations to that. And to your right, Councillor Clayton, congratulations. I'm proud that you've got 14 years of marriage under your belt here today, <laughs> yesterday. Well, I saw it today on Facebook, so it's today for me, but congratulations anyways. I'm so proud. I'm blushing. I'm sweating. I'm getting out of here. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Bressy. On one hand, how do I follow that? On the other hand, at least I don't have to worry about brevity. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
So, so in, on in that mind, I want to talk about the fireworks. I don't know if this was intentional or if this was an accident or what, but about ten minutes of the fireworks, there was kind of this big brouhaha where a bunch went up in the air, and then it stopped, and there was this long pause, and everybody started going, "Is that it? That was short, and that was kind of a lame finale." And then all of a sudden they start up again, and everybody was so excited they're starting up again, and it finishes in the best fireworks finale I have ever seen in my life. And so whether that was intentional or not, I sure loved the psycho and I appreciated it. But mostly, holy smokes, that fireworks finale! I've I've been to the World Fireworks Festival in Calgary before, and that was the best finale I've ever seen in my life. I literally don't think I saw empty sky above me at all. So if you didn't say up, that's too bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> a few other things that you want to highlight is I got to go with Councillor Friesen to the Youth Council year-end party. Mm. Even though I'm not on it, we all got invited, and that was great. But, and the thing I wanted to point out there is those kids are very eager for in, more input into the city and for more of a voice in this organization. And, and I hope that as we're talking about community engagement and as we're figuring out how to work with advisory committees, we can give more voice to these kids. They've got lots of passion, lots of energy. And I really hope we can be intentional about interfacing with them. And it was fun to get to hang out with them for an evening. Two other things I'll briefly highlight is the Bear Creek Folk Fest board asked me to come to one of their meetings to give them an update on what was going on with cannabis. And we had all kinds of other conversations while I was there. And they asked me to, to bring back to councillors sincere thanks for all the support the city has given to them. And that's not just the cash. That's also the support of our park staff, especially but enforcement services and uh, quite a few of our departments, they were so blown away and so so humbled and so grateful for the support the city has given them. So I said I'd bring on their thanks. They also asked me to throw out the open offer that if there's anything we can ever help them with, or sorry, anything they can ever help us with, uh, whether that's education on new cannabis laws or any other social outcomes we might want in the city, that they would love to be partners with us in more than just putting on an awesome folk fest. So I said I'd bring that along. Last thing I'll highlight is I went to an info night for a charity I'd never heard of, and that was Dogs with Wings. And they train service dogs, so about 40% of their pups become autism dogs. They also do dogs that sit in with people who have been through traumatic experiences, have to testify in court. Of course, we're all familiar with seeing eye dogs. And what I had no idea was that these dogs get no government funding whatsoever, that they're all that their veterinary care, their breeding, and their training is all funded by philanthropy, and it's largely done by volunteers at a cost of about forty thousand dollars per dog that they sell to these people who these dogs change their life for one dollar. So it was a cool organization, and it was great to get to go to learn about some really dedicated people in our community. It was also scary because now I think my wife wants us to take on one of these dogs, and I think she's serious about that. So it was. I don't know if I'm happy or regret going to that info night. <laughs> But it was exciting to hear about this society, and I'd never heard about them before. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I've got four items I'd like to talk, uh, talk a little bit about. Uh, on the 25th, we attended the uh, performance measurement and management training, and I'd like to thank the consultants and the administration for putting on an excellent uh, three hours of information based on priority-based budgeting. Uh, the next day we had a meeting with K Division. There's some announcements that are gonna come out here in the near future that will uh, make Grand Prairie uh, the first. Uh, I'll let Mayor Given talk about that if that's what he wants to talk about tonight. Uh, we also had a doctor's reception here uh, and then uh, it was actually a very uh, informal uh, meeting. Uh, we talked about a number of things that uh, doctors and the, and the healthcare have concerns. But in all, it was a good thing. There was some people that were here doing their practicum. Uh, I guess that's not necessarily the right word, but uh, maybe it is. Uh, but they're here and we're trying to get them to stay in Grand Prairie. And uh, on July 1st, Councillor Thiessen, Mayor Given, and myself and Jackie Clayton walked the parade. I'm going to say it was the old crew that did that, and uh, I feel very old today. Well, the older crew. You're experienced. <laughs> You've got another term on you. Yeah. Okay, everybody was old except for Jackie, and she, she was younger, and, uh, and she showed up and did a job, but uh, put on a lot of hours. 
a lot of miles, and we handed out a lot of candy. And thank you all for being there. Thanks, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, just a warning, it's Councillor Clayton's turn next. <laughs> yeah. I'll, the grip. Yeah. I'll uh, take over for my senior to my right. Yeah. Um, uh, I feel it today. <laughs> Next, uh, just uh, one sort of thing that's not really a council duty, but I wanted to say I was away the week before last, uh, had an opportunity to go to Nashville and support a local Grand Prairie girl, uh, Tennille Towns, who uh, sang at the Bluebird Cafe and also sang at the Grand Old Opry. Um, 120 people got on a plane to go down to Nashville to support her, and I had never been to the city, and it was a, it's a great city, very welcoming. Um, and truly was uh, a few days of pride for her and uh, for the people from the region who represented her. So I want to congratulate her as she heads out on the road, um, opening for Miranda Lambert and Little Big Town. So uh, she's definitely that Grand Prairie girl is, is well on her way, and so congratulations to her. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, just a quick follow-up to uh, Councillor Bressy's comments, the activities. Um, I had a couple of people text me on June 30th in the evening stating that the festivities, in addition to the fireworks, were some of the best they'd seen in the park. And, and to, uh, to uh, give kudos to whoever set up the programming and, and the scheduling of um, entertainment on the stage that night. I could hear Councillor Thiessen and, and I was trying to text him to be quiet because I was trying to sleep and uh, you could hear him through the entire valley. But uh, other than that, uh, everyone thought it was a great event. So thank you. I just got one more thing. Oh. The Alberta Summer Games is happening in less than a month. And if you haven't put your name in, to volunteer, it would be greatly appreciated. If you can't do it, maybe your spouse or a friend. They need 500 more volunteers, so substantial amount. Thank you. Councillor Minhas. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor Gavin. I went to a few events, but I like to add uh, Clyde Bell and Blackburn about Dan Parsi, because I like to add. You already said a lot of stuff, but I personally spend a lot of time with him. I was with this last twelve years, I think six years, in the board with the chamber. That was a very well done. He I learned a lot of stuff from him and uh, his patience and how to deal with when the issue comes with the county and the city and college and all. The chamber was the best. I recognize that part. And beside that, uh, June 30th, it was a great night. That night I was quite busy with my daughter's wedding, but people went up to, to uh, our Paradise Hotel on 10th floor and watching, and I heard a lot of good comments how grateful was that night. They saw it from there. Some people went down, but that was a very good thing. So then that, uh, I joined the training our strategy planning three hours and a few more, but already said I was busy with the, my daughter's wedding and it, good commerce, well done. And I hope those kids enjoy their life and stay together. <laughs> Thanks, Councilor Mithas. Um, I think uh, council members have covered uh, the majority of events that I uh, would have highlighted. Um, there were a couple, though, that I think I was the only council representative at. Uh, the Métis Local uh, had an event uh, to recognize uh, uh, the Alberta Métis uh, president, uh, Audrey Portois, uh, who was in Grand Prairie. She's up for re-election uh, for the Métis Nation of Alberta. Um, and so the uh, Métis Local had an event in her honor here. Uh, Audrey's been a great advocate and uh, learning from my friend Angie uh, Kriar from uh, Métis Local 1990, I used the opportunity at the podium uh, to press Audrey for her support for housing for uh, Elders uh, Shelter, uh, for, the, for the second Elders Shelter. Um, Angie, as many council members would know, uh, would never let an opportunity to go by without pressing somebody for support for her project and so I thought I would uh, take a page out of her book and uh, do the same uh, in front of that crowd. And, and Audrey certainly is very, very supportive. And I think we'll see the Métis Nation of Alberta uh, support uh, the Métis local as they move forward with that project. Um, and then uh, the following Sunday, I was down at Muskegee Park uh, to join uh, in the uh, celebration of Indigenous culture. Um, uh, 
it wasn't exactly uh, uh, National Indigenous Persons Day uh, because that was a little bit earlier, but uh, the Grand Prairie has uh, always sort of marched the beat of its own drum uh, and wanted to have a family event. And so uh, the Indigenous community here organized that on a Sunday where more people could participate. I saw uh, Councillor Friesen was in the crowd as well. Um, I had the opportunity to help set up a tent, uh, which uh, made me probably the sweatiest I've ever been uh, for, uh, for doing uh, comments uh, following. Uh, but just great to see the community support that there is um, for our Indigenous uh, culture and heritage in our region. And with that, I think I'll call our meeting adjourned.